you have a milling machine, you can use a simple trick to find a die's bend center. In this example, I use the chuck and spotting drill. A collet and better center to replace the spotting drill will yield improved accuracy. The concept remains the same. Make use of the best tools you have on hand. The die in my example doesn't have its bend center in the middle. It actually is offset by 15 thousandths, which will need consideration when setting up to make accurate bends. Set up your milling vise and clamp the die in its jaws. From there, we can go ahead and locate the die's bend center. Here's a trick you can use to find the bend center of your die with respect to the back. First, we'll want to locate the back of the die. We've got an edge finder, a sterret edge finder, which is 0.2 in diameter. We'll go ahead and pick up the back of the die with that. And you see that right there. We'll zero out our dial. So now we're set up right over the center of the back edge. Get a little small spotting drill. Put that in. This die is one inch and 90 thousandths. So let me crank in two, four, and five. So I'll crank in a half an inch and let's go another 50 thousandths just to eyeball it so we're close to the center. Here's a precision parallel hardened, bring this down, put just a little bit of pressure on it, lock the quill, and you can see what's going to happen here. That's going to teeter-totter like a seesaw. So what we'll want to do is we'll want to just get that level right there, and then we can read off the dial and for my die, that'll be 0.560. So 0.560 from the back to the center of the bend radius. It's a really great idea to write down the bend center distance and identify the front of the die. Install the die in your press brake. This gets us set up to check how the bend will actually match the bend center. You'll set your back gauge against the back of the die knowing it's 0.560 inches from the bend center in this example. If you have a DRO, zero it at the back of the die. Open a space between the dies and crank in minus 0.560 inches so you're under the bend center. Zero the DRO again so it now reads the exact bend distance. Crank out so the back gauge clears the dies. Let's go ahead and make a bend and see what happens. Pull a piece of aluminum out of the scrap box. This is 063 5052, relatively soft aluminum. We'll just check it, make sure the ends are square, reasonably square. That's pretty good. That's also pretty good. So we'll figure out what the length of this is. The width isn't all that important for this test bend, but looks like we've got about 5.984. 5.984, so write that down, 5.984 inches. And then we'll want to identify what's going to come out of the front of the press brake. So this is going to be our test piece and we'll go over and make a bend right in the center and the idea is that the flanges on either side will be equal if we've got our bend center correct. All right, we're ready to make our test bend. Here's the piece. We punched in the length and divided by two and came up with 2.992. So our back gauge is set at 2.992. If everything 
is correct, when we bend this piece, the two flanges will be of equal length. So let's power up the press brake and make the test bend and see how this comes out. Cycling machine. Okay, there's our bend right there. So we got to go over and take some measurements. Here's a test piece. Let's see how well we did. As I had mentioned before, this flange and this flange should be identical. So this is the one that was coming out of the front. We've got 3.053. I'll write that down, 3.053 for that flange. And the flange that was inboard, 3.0, uh, 3.040, about 3.040, 3.040. So the front flange is a little long, so what that means is that this bend is off by half of 13 thousandths, or about six and a half thousandths, probably six thousandths is good enough. So we want to subtract six thousandths from the front flange, which will add six thousandths to the back flange. So we've got to make an adjustment on our uh, DRO. So let's do that and do another test bin. All right, we reached into the scrap heap, pulled out another chunk of aluminum. This one measured 5.874, half that 2.937. And from our other test piece, we concluded that the front was six thousandths big. So we've got to subtract six thousandths from the front. So we're going to bring our back gauge back further away from the bend center, six thousandths of an inch, to draw that piece in and shorten the front. So our back gauge setting now with that correction, that six thousandths correction, is going to be 2.943. If you can see that there, 2.943. So we'll go over and bend this piece, come back, and see if we got it nailed. Okay, here's the test piece with the corrected six thousandths. So let's take a measurement. If I measure at the top here, I got 2.995. I measure at the bottom, 2.997, maybe. So it's a little out of square, 2.995. This edge is a little bit out of square. If I put this up in here, you can see it wiggling a little bit. It's not exactly square, so that introduces an error. Also, this side here, you probably see it, it's wiggling a little bit, so the end is not quite square. So that introduces an error, but let's just measure here. 2.985 at the top, 2.989 at the bottom. So, best case, Call at 2.990 here and 2.994, 2.995. So we're around two thousandths, three thousandths good here. It's about all you can expect from the setup here. It's pretty good. I'll go ahead and do a third test piece. What I'm going to do to remove this possibility of an out of square uh, end here, I'm going to machine off the ends in the milling machine so these are absolutely square. We'll do one more piece and see how that measures out. If bends don't come out as expected, there are possible causes. The graphic lists some of the more common ones. Shears can cut metal out of square or inaccurately. 
check sheared metal to make sure it has the expected dimensions, especially the edges that will register against your back gauge. The goal is to keep dimensions less than or equal to plus or minus ten thousandths of an inch. If your upper and lower dies aren't aligned properly, bends won't be accurate. Press brakes have set screws on the bed which holds the lower die. These allow the lower die to be moved into registration with the upper die. You can make feeler gauges from scraps of metal and use them to check the die gaps. Old press brakes, like the one shown in this video, may have worn parts which will introduce errors. You may need to accept the errors this creates or work around them. A back gauge that wiggles around won't set correctly or consistently. Try to tighten it up, correct problems, or replace worn parts. If your measurements from the back of the die to its bend center aren't correct, bends will be long or short of those expected. As a general rule, a die radius should match the metal thickness and the lower die width by eight times the metal thickness for a formed bend. The bend allowance is the amount of material required to sweep the bend. The Machinery's Handbook has tables to get you close. Details on this were covered in another video. Bending a test piece in the middle will cancel out concerns for bend allowance. Do this as explained in the video to check dies and your back gauge setting. This piece we squared up the ends here, which makes a difference because you're putting that edge against the back gauge, and if it's not square, then the piece gets turned with respect to the die and it can introduce errors. So this piece was pretty accurate. We went ahead and bend it, and let's see what we get. So we're getting about 1.7, about 1.710, 710, 79, I don't know whether you can see that or not, on this leg. Well, let's see what we get on this leg. So we're getting 1.714. So these two legs or flanges are within about four or five thousandths of one another, which means this bend is only off by half that amount or two or two and a half thousandths. That's an old press brake, 40 plus years old. So it's about as good as it's gonna get for that machine, which is but not bad considering. So the next thing we need to do is work an absolute bend and make sure that works. We need to know the distance from the material edge to the bend center. This will be what our back gauge is set to. The formula in the graphic gives us that distance in terms of S, MT, BR, and BA, where S is our bend goal or flange length. S will be outside dimensions, or one inch for this example. MT is material thickness, or 0.063 inches. BR is the bend radius of the tooling. My dies are 16th inch, or 0.0625 inches. BA is the bend allowance, or 0.138 inches. The Machinery's Handbook publishes extensive tables of bend allowances for common metals and bend conditions. We'll use this number and see how accurate it is. Plugging the numbers into the formula gives us the bend center BC, or 0.944 inches. The back gauge is set to this number with the expectation it will produce a one inch bend. Back over to our press brake. Let's fire it up. So according to the calcs in the graphic, we set our back gauge at 0.944, expectation being we're going to produce a one inch bend. So we got our test piece, the cycle machine, register this against the back gauge. Okay, there's our 90 degree bend. So let's go measure it and see how close it it is. We used a bend allowance of 0.138, which was taken from the machinery's handbook. So we'll see how good that is. Here's our piece. 
we just bent. Again, we use the bend allowance from the machinery's handbook for soft aluminum. This is 50-52. That was 0 0.138 inches. We went through the calcs and we came up with a distance from the edge of the material to the bend center of 0 0.944. So let's take a measurement, see what we got. We're looking for an outside dim of one inch. I don't know if you can see that or not. This one came out pretty well. It's a thousandths over. We'll go down a little bit here and you can see now we're three thousandths over. So this material is a little bit out of square or the dies in the press brake are a little bit out of square. As I have said, it's an old machine, so there's limits on what you can expect for accuracy, but this is pretty good. I'm happy with it. It's certainly well within 10,000, so that's your absolute one-inch test bend.